Procreate Genius just released a new version, version 1.0.6, and I think it brings some pretty exciting updates. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through updating your version of Procreate Dreams, and then I will show you what features are available. So here's my iPad, and if I want to update Procreate Dreams, I'm going to click on the App Store. I'm going to go to the search bar. I'm going to type in Procreate Dreams. Now you can see here's Procreate, Procreate Dreams. I want to click Update. Now before I open this, I want to click on Procreate Dreams. And if I look here, you can see version history, and I click on that. And now you can see what was included in this version. So I'll go over this one by one. So I'm going to go back and I want to open Procreate Dreams. Okay, so here I'm in the Procreate Dreams gallery. I'm going to click plus to create a new one. And one of the new features you can see here is if I click these three buttons, here's my frames per second. And before you had select ones you had to pick from, but here I can set a custom one. If I want to set something unusual, I can click like 88. And now that's my frames per second. Previously, you couldn't do a custom frames per second. So I'm going to go back and I want to select 24 for this. And we'll select draw. The next one I want to talk about is previously in Procreate, if you had a track here and a drawing, that frame would last all the way through the end of your timeline. But now the default is one frame. So instead of having cut down your frames when it filled the whole timeline, now it just starts at one frame. If you want that to extend to the end of the timeline, like the previous setting, you can click and hold this. Now you can hit fill duration, and then that'll fill it up just like it did before. So I'm gonna do that with two fingers. So one of the most exciting things about this release is now you can add pressure and smoothing to your brushes. So to do that, I'm gonna click on my brush here. I'm going to click on Technical Pen. I'm going to draw a line. You can see how that's kind of wavy. If I go to the name of my project, which is here, and click on that, now I'm going to Preferences, and you can see I can set my app pressure sensitivity, stabilization, motion filtering, motion filtering expression. So I'm going to drag stabilization over and hit Back, hit Done. Now you can see how smooth that is. I increase it a little too much for exaggeration and effect, but you know this is probably one of the features people have been really asking for since this came out. So I'm going to go back to pressure and smoothing, and I'm going to bring that stabilization down a bit. Go back, done. Much better. So that's how you add stabilization to it. I'm going to go back to my preferences. Go back to pressure and smoothing. So that is stabilization of your stroke. Motion filtering helps smooth the results of trimmers and shakes when you use the brush. So let me drag this out, hit back, and done. And we'll click on here and add a new layer and unclick that one so I don't have to see it. You can see how that's really smoothing mine out. Now all these settings do very similar things, but they're slightly different. So motion filtering expression helps take the wobbles out of the stroke. It can also help them be smooth and straight. So I'm going to turn motion filtering down, turn up expression, hit back and done. Now to me, this one seems a lot more natural, even at the percentage I have, which is pretty high. So I'm going to bring this all the way up to 80. And I think this looks quite a bit smoother than I was getting before. I'm going to go back and turn that down. Now the last one is tip attachment. And this works in conjunction with motion filtering and establishes the start of your stroke. When tip attachment is on, strokes begin and continue where the tip of a stroke starts and tracks on the canvas. So currently you can't turn that off. So maybe that's something that will be enabled in the future. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is the clipping masks. And I will say these aren't quite as functional as I'd like at the moment because we still can't rearrange layers by dragging them around. I'm sure that's coming soon, but currently you've got to really plan ahead about how you want your layers to stack because you can't move them as of yet once you establish them. So if I go to my layers, I currently have Batman on that top layer. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to select Clipping Mask. You can see it disappears. If I go to my layer beneath it, I don't have anything on it now. I'm going to choose a bright green color and a pretty big brush. 
Now if I paint, you can see now I have him visible where that is being drawn. So that's an example of how the masking works. Again, I'm not sure it's something I'll use at the moment due to the limitations of layers, but I do think additional features will be added fairly quickly. Procreate Dreams hasn't been out that long. They've already added a lot of new things to it, but the big thing is the brush stabilization. I think that's a huge add, especially this early on. I've been drawing in Procreate Dreams and I didn't like the idea of having to draw in Procreate and drag them over to Procreate Dreams or create duplicate brushes that have stabilization added to them and dragging them over. So that addition is great. So I just wanted to provide a quick update of the new options that are available in Procreate Dreams. Hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.